Hey here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice. A treat today, Alan. Okay. I'm always, Guess what I'm we're going to be talking kidding. about? We're going to be talking about Le Studio Morin Heights. Now that we're allowed to uh, get out a little bit here, Jimmy went traveling, went up to Moray Heights. That's right. And had to talk about the, the carcass. I guess there's only the carcass left, Jim, you know, <laughs> burnt out structure. That's right. That's Their right. studio, a famous, famous recording studio about 45 minutes north of Montreal, where many, many, many top-notch grade a artist recorded yes. most famously and maybe perhaps uh the most was our rush seven albums out no. seven albums neil loved the area so much he bought a, a cottage not far away from there that's how much he enjoyed the uh, laurentian mountains here in beautiful quebec and just a brief history was andre Perre and his wife who who their claim to fame was uh, engineering uh, songs for or song for John Lennon, I guess when he came to Montreal, and his dream to build a studio where people can be free to sort of create in the middle of the woods in a very tranquil and peaceful setting. Cat Stevens' numbers was uh, one of the albums recorded there. Yeah, yeah, and you had David Bowie uh, tonight. The that police. Was recorded there. The police. Uh, synchronicity was what mixed there. Was that what it was? Or overdubbed? Overdubbed. But look, I mean, here, you know, for me, there's there's April uh, Wine, Harder there's... Faster. That's them right there in front of the studio. Yeah. You know, Harder Faster. I like to rock. Great album. Great Video production. Was the same room as Rush when they did Tom Sawyer. You got there. You got that. I got there. Here's. Moving pictures. But, but hold on. This is the picture here, right? This is the loose studio yeah. pictures right here. You could see where Alex is and you could see the window out into the forest. And they loved it there. And the, what a great production. What a great sound this had. Grace under pressure. Yep. Yep. I got another one for you, Alex. Wait a second. Where's the dogs? Here's a yeah, dog. You got that one? Here's a dog. Our friend. Look at this. Queen's right. No mention <laughs> of it whatsoever. You couldn't find anything. There's a picture of them and then all the lyrics. I mean. And, and when we spoke to Jeff Tate, he says he was writing or creating the characters in Montreal, right? On St. Denis mm -hmm. Street in a bar. And then he used to go and record, you know, up north, you know, at least to the countryside of Montreal, the album. So he was creating the characters in Montreal and, of course, recording at Morton Heights and probably one of the best Queensryche albums there ever was. I think so. Yeah. Uh, one of my top 10 albums of all time. And in fact, um, when he was here with Avantasia and I got the chance to speak to Jeff, uh, we revisited that. He, I asked him if he had time to go around and see some of his old haunts. He said he didn't, but uh, we did talk uh, briefly about their studio and uh, what, the, what the status of that uh, building was while he was here in town. So and, there's another and one, Jeff Healy. Oh, Rest yes, yes. Jeff Healy held the pay. But Alan, we forgot, to, we forgot to mention that after our little chit-chat, I'm going to show what is the remains of the studio. All right. Look at this one here, Alan. Here we go. Well, that's a live album, Jim. I'm it's a confused. Live album. Isn't it strange? Isn't it strange? I'm confused that a live album made it. Look at this. Look at this. Of course, it's not at the studio, but a lot of it was recorded in Montreal. They used the mobile, the Le Studio mobile, to record it. Uh oh, Preston. wait, watch out. Watch out in the internet. Roll the bones. Counterparts. So, I mean, you're looking at what? The, you know, permanent waves was what? 78, 79, 78. Got my moving pictures. All the way through to uh, 90, 93, Rush. Oh, yeah. Right? It's almost, almost 20 years. Though. April Wine, I believe it was First Glance that they recorded no, there. No, Harder Faster. No, no, harder, faster as well, but I believe also power play was recorded there. 
The one right sure after that. Nature of the I'm Beast. Not sure. I'm not sure. I don't think so, but maybe. Yeah, and uh, The Cult. The Cult? Yeah, which I'll... Electric. Uh, electric yeah, one, Ocean. One track. One, song, one track. One track. <laughs> Dream of the Blue Turtle by Sting. Uh, that the was tea over party. there. Canada's own The Tea Party recorded three albums there, so... Kim Mitchell, so shaking name, like a human you know, being. Celine, Celine Zion. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, Kim Mitchell, uh, Lawrence Gowan, who's the lead singer and piano player with Sticks these days. Uh, Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah, yeah. The Bee Gees. You see a lot of Bee Gees, a lot of Canadian uh, influence. But it was the premier studio here in Canada. I think uh, we had, you know, the metal works, but... Uh, I think uh, the studio for a very long time, like I said, you know, Cat Stevens in 1975 and the Tea Party all the way up in the early 2000s. That's that's quite a great run. And we're not talking uh, just local bands recording. We're yeah. talking some of the biggest names in the business. Yeah. Brian Adams, Nazareth. It goes Nazareth. on and on. And I believe uh, Frank Marino. I can't Rainbow. know. I don't, Rainbow. Oh, Rainbow. Straight uh, between the eyes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Keith Turner. Richards. Keith Richards. So we mentioned his, Keith Richards. His first solo album, yeah. Yeah, I mean. So what do uh, so now? Now, what's the what's the story here, Jim? You went up there. Well, I want to give a little. I want to give a little. There, let's there's get a, a timeline going. Let's get a timeline going here. Yeah, right? Get a timeline. Going. Built 1972 by Andre Perry and his wife. Uh, like we mentioned, a recording engineer. Cat Stevens probably was one of the first albums I believe that was uh, that was recorded there, mm-hmm. until. Until he sold it in 1988. I think they're in Australia now. I think it's the last I heard. They were. That's what I, I remember. Well, in 1993, it was owned by L'Equipe Spectra, a Montreal company that uh, I guess at the time uh, did the Jazz Fest, right? Um, shut down in 2003. That's where the squatters started infiltrating the studio. It was completely abandoned, graffiti everywhere, people just basically taking things, stealing stuff. You don't call it stealing if you just leave it there, right? And nobody owns it. Uh, 2009. Well, it had a lock on the door. <laughs> well, there was yeah, the no doors were on locked. The doors. <laughs> there, were, there were no, that, they got rid of that really quickly. 2009, it was bought by again I, I can't confirm it or not but let's say by a company or a person and ever since then it's been the same owner and it's just basically sitting there <laughs> and i guess I, I have to say this but this man named richard baxter who's a, a drummer a street performer last five years he sort of dedicated his life to sort of try to get this renovated and i will be clear right here and now he does not own the property. He does not own the building, but he's on this quest to get it cleaned up and make it some sort of, I don't know, museum, maybe a place where people can learn how to play music. So again, he doesn't own it. He, he, he claims he a owns labor this, of love, Jim. A labor, labor of love. love. And the guy's driven. I got to give the guy credit. You know, he gets a lot of flack on the internet, this guy, because, you know, who are you to do this? But at the end of the day, no one's doing anything but him, right? Yeah. Um, so hats off to him. I did buy this shirt off him. He did not force me to buy it. He did not ask me to buy it. I wanted to have a little memento of the studio that we so much love the music from, right? The famous, famous logo. Unfortunately, in 2017, there was a fire that was all over the news. Yeah, I woke up one morning uh, to the radio and I said, hey, there's a fire in Maury Heights. The, the old the studio is, is on fire. And I mean, we interviewed uh, Jeff Tate right around that time, just so shortly after. And we were asking him, uh, did you hear? He said, yeah, I heard something about that. So It's sad, because, if, uh, it's sad because Richard was doing his best. And he's one guy, right? He's doing his best to send the message out. Let's, let's get this fixed up. The owner, and, and I'm being quite honest here from my understanding is the owner really doesn't know what he wants to do right because it requires a lot of money and very little return right that's the end the end point if you're a museum and you charge 20 bucks and it costs five hundred thousand to fix up 
your return on investment is a long time. I think it's up to more nights the city to declare it a historic landmark. That's my opinion. And, and again, I don't know the politics of why the building's there and why no one cares and what the owner's intention are. are. All I know is this. I think the city could step up and whatever financial burdens it has or doesn't, they can just declare it a historic site, doesn't have to pay taxes, at least my understanding, and use that monument to bring in tourists, right? Like, you know, you drive into a, a town and, hey, get to see the Morn Heights here, turn left, turn right. I didn't see that. Maybe there is a sign somewhere, but they should use that. Like Niagara Falls, come see the falls. Like, you know, uh, some... Well, I mean, there's, you know, there's, I don't know... Uh... I don't know the the logistics uh, insurance wise for the owner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. you have to work all that out. I mean, again, we're just we're just talking. We're just uh, talking. You were you were you were able to get up there. You were able to witness it for yourself. I, I, I was kind of sad. I was kind of sad. It's like walking in the paths of greatness and all these great stars. And Jimmy was taking the same path. Well, I, I saw. Look. I, I got to say, I'm just going to give everybody the facts here. I saw footage of it before, graffiti and broken doors and broken windows. Then I saw footage of it maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago before the fires. It looked, hey, man, this could shape up to be a nice little museum. No promises that if this money goes to this GoFundMe, that it will become a museum because it's up to the owner at the end of the day, right? So that's why I think the only road to this is declaring it some sort of historic monument by the city of Morin Heights or the town of Morin Heights. That's the only way I see it. And I'm just being completely honest. Um, if, if people want to buy a shirt, I think you're getting something in return. You're getting a little memento. That's cool. Other than that, I think you should talk to Richard Baxter. And, and from there, you if you want to give, give. But if you feel it's better you talk to him. I don't want to tell anybody to give or not to give. I just want to tell people, talk to him. See Talk about his passion. Talk about the building. And, and from there, take it. No, oh, and again, that's why you went up there. You know, all these historic albums uh, recorded there. It's got a great history. Uh, and, it, you know, it's, it's sad to see that it's, it's, it's decrepit now. Uh, it's, it's, it's not as far from its glory days. But, you know, a lot of things, uh, a lot of things change over the years, right? I mean, it's, 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 uh, stuff goes bankrupt or whatever. It's no longer functioning for whatever reason. Uh, you know, it goes the way of the dodo bird. So uh, uh, it's unfortunate that the premier studio here in Canada for, for decades uh, has, has ended up that way. And and I guess if anybody has suggestions of uh, what we should do with, uh, with the studio, of, uh, what they yeah. should do, um, you know, to send them in and uh, maybe get the boy, we can get some momentum, get the ball rolling for all the, I mean, I, I, the artists that we've interviewed over time and the, you know, the books I've read and stuff, it's, it, it, nobody's had anything bad to ever say about their experience at that Maury Heights and, uh, and the studio. You know, it's an interesting thing. And I said this before that in the new box set of permanent waves 40 mm -hmm. in the box set rush the band or the people that put together that box set, right? They, included uh, sort of like a notepad that says Le Studio, like that. And it also has the URL, at least from my understanding of this video I watched, of the unboxing, you know, the GoFundMe sort of URL, you know. So there is an endorsement from the people who put the box set together of the 40-year anniversary of Rush, right? The management or whoever it was. So that's pretty cool. Um, Getty Lee, when we, were, when we went to see Getty Lee signing the books, his books in Montreal. I know uh, Richard was there and he gave him a shirt like this and Getty wears the shirt today. Cause it just, it just makes him feel so good to remember the good old days, you know, of, of what that studio, that energy that he gave them. Right. I did not go inside the building because there's a sign outside the building that says, you know, uh, so there was a fire and the roof collapsed. And you can imagine after something like that, it's not fit unless you have a construction company go in and fix it. So there's a sign outside that says you can't enter the building, but I did not enter. But I did look through the windows around and I could see inside it's, it's fixable. It's, it's super fixable. Uh, it's, it's repairable. It's a question is who's going to fix it. 
I don't know How, what cost. How's it going to get done? At what cost? And is there a return from that cost? So these are big questions. It was sad. I could see a lot of work being done around it because that's the only place where people can do work, clearing out the trees, you know, making those little shrines of all the albums, which is pretty cool. Um, the lake is beautiful. There's a nice, great lake there. They boarded up all the windows and they took, removed all the flags because they didn't want people going there thinking it's open and walking in, right? There is an alarm system that Richard installed. There, is cam there are cameras so people don't start smashing doors and start squatting there. So it's secure. So that's the good news. It's secure. That's all I can say, really. Watch the video. Watch the video. It's going to be right after this. And, uh, you know, hopefully somebody with all deep pockets will say, you know what, I want to maybe build some condos and my centerpiece will be the studio and we'll make it into some sort of yeah no, cafe. And now you're talking you know and we get some uh, contributions from some of the bands that recorded there you know maybe they can send some of the gold records or uh, uh, drum sets or whatever you know this was uh, and, and make it the, that kind of yeah incorporate like a hard rock cafe in, in a larger setting now, I think that's a great idea Jim I mean uh, now you're saying you got a reason to go there you got a reason to stay there you got a reason to yeah. uh, the history is, is preserved. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of bands might be willing to, to get some gear, like a, like a hard rock cafe, excuse me. And uh, maybe well, if there's, go, if there's a resort or there's condos, there's a lake there, you know, you put that as the centerpiece and, you know, you can, you can the make studio something. condo, <laughs> the studio cafe. <laughs> If you've got about $40 million to spare, Jimmy will be the project manager. <laughs> well, you know, and a lot of people give Richard a hard time. You know, he doesn't own the property. He doesn't own, he says he owns a name, the studio. Fair enough. He's a cool drummer, a very good drummer. Great, great drummer. He's, he's a man with a big dream, you know, and maybe that dream might not happen, but hats off to him for dreaming and, and, you know, it's commendable. A lot of people crap on right. him. So you know, but I don't think love. they he's, should. He, he's taken on the mantle to be the caretaker is what I, I, I understand from this. And if he's not going to do it, who's going to do it, right? That's right. So he's trying like, to keep the, keep the memory alive. So I mean, he does, you know, podcasts and he does videos. And that's how you keep it alive. That's how you get interest. And maybe he's not doing it right, but what is right? How, what is the right way to do something like this when there's no resources available, right? So hats off to him. I, you know, I, I appreciate what he's doing. All right, Al. A little, a little uh, time traveling back in the past and talking about a great, great studio here in Canada, just about 45 minutes north of where Jimmy and I are. And yeah. it was uh, one of the greats back in the day. And what do we do with it moving forward is, I guess, today's the discussion, debate. Leave your comments. You know, leave your comments. What can you do at the end of the day? I don't know. I think that lobby some sort of multimillionaire to build condos around it. That's probably what you could do. Get the, get the city of Morn Heights to declare it a historic site and just rebuild it and, and use that to bring in the tourists from all around the world. We'll leave it here. Everybody watch the little clip I did at the studio on his uh, on my remote, pilgrimage, his remote travels, <laughs> my many travels, Alan, my many travels. All right. Enjoy. All right. Here we are in Morton Heights at the, the famous uh, Le studio right here with a Richard who's given like more at six years of your life, trying to piece this together after a fire, after a roof, roof collapse. There's just so many crazy things that's happening. Oh, yeah. And with all those insanities, or let's say all these problems and challenges, you're still trying to... No, I'll never give up. Until never giving finished. up? No. Not no, giving no. up to finish? Until, uh, you know, until it's done, you know? So why do you find it so important that you... Well, I think it's the, the building that's the most music history in Canada, Yeah. by far. So we have Rush. We have April Wine. Rainbow. Rainbow. David Bowie. Bee Gees. Bee Gees. Celine Dion. Celine Dion for your Celine Dion Lynette lovers. Workman. Yes. Um, Nazareth. Nazareth. Uh, three albums, Nazareth. Yeah. Tea, tea Party, four albums. 
in the list, and then these are an Operation Mind Crime by a Queens right? Yes, right? yes, absolutely. So I mean, you're not talking about just the albums. The you're cult. talking about the cult, uh, the cult, Chicago, the cult, Chicago, Cat Stevens, Cat Stevens, Brian Adams, Brian Adams, uh, Lover Boy, yeah, uh, Honeymoon Suite, Streetheart, two albums. So in other words, this is not. This is like an inspirational place where people made so much great music. Oh yeah. Right, and that's why you're not giving up. 250 million albums sold from this. Wow! Yeah. So let's take a look at sort of we'll build up to, to the studio, which is again it's still under major repairs, right? So let's take a look at this here, Linda. Come here. These are little little shrines, right? The monuments. I call them monuments. Little monuments. <coughs> so if you take a look at this here, this is a permanent waves. First album they recorded here. First album they recorded here with the Spirit of Radio. That's right. Uh, you did know? You, did you know uh, the 40th uh, box set? The 40th. Yes, just came out. Came out, and yeah. they, they put uh, the, the studio rebuildthestudio.com tag. No, I didn't know that. On the notepad. Well, that's pretty amazing. That's nice. The rush yep. are, uh, are supporting it. So. Yep, that's it. That's Slowly, very nice. Slowly. So let's that's move on to nice. the next little okay. little one here. Look here, Linda. Come here. Let's still keep it recording. We're going to do this all in one shot. Here we go. Rush, moving pictures. With the flag, too? With the flag. Oh my god, there's, it's, well, it's kind of not really positioned well, but well, yes. Well, there's one, uh, That's a moving pictures flag right yeah, there, right? It's one that one sided. So here we have moving pictures, of course, Tom Sawyer, Red Barrichetta, YYZ. The the whole Vital Signs. Vital Signs, which was actually Tom Sawyer and Vital Signs and were filmed and inside. Light. Yeah, yeah. Tree, All right, let's tree, move. Yeah. Let's move on here. Of course, exit stage left, the famous Rush album. That 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 album was done live, but the only thing they kept it was the drums and the live um, uh, the audience. Everything else were was re-recorded re here. Oh, I didn't know if it was re-recorded. I thought yeah. it was remixed, like mixed here. No, it was re-recorded. Oh, so Terry Brown said it. Okay, all right. So he said it's almost a studio album. There you go. So I was debating of doing it or not. I said, oh, I'm going to do it. Why you not? Know? It's part you of the know, history. Part and of here, history. of course, the dogs. The single one. Signals, right? That was done double. He's a new world man, That's right? right? There we go. Right. And, and the uh, weapon. and. Uh, this is, right here, we're seeing the peak of Rush right here. All the years. All the years. And we're moving up. And oh my God, right after Signals, what do you got? You got Grace Under Pressure, right? And you have After the egg image. and the, the vice. That's right. So the meaning behind the egg, you can't crack an egg if you hold it at both points. If you, However, you put it sideways, you oh, can crack, you it. crack it. But it, you cannot crack the egg if you have it Grace even in a vice. Pressure. That's craziness. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> and look, where are the buddies? Here's the buddies. What are you doing there? Uh, cleaning up a little bit. I see what you're doing. That's, it's it's uh, never ending. It's never ending uh, your work. It's always working. <laughs> but here, you can see the stairs. Yeah, yeah. When I okay. got here. The bunnies from Presto. 89. Right? 89, the bunnies. Yeah. Okay, let's move up. That's the nicest one, I think. I think so, One, one of the nicest ones. Hey, oh, Jack, relax. That's right. Ah. I have a feeling my wife holding the camera, she's going to fall down the stairs. Ah. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> here we go. What is this? Roll the bones. It's not Rush finished. does rap. It's not finished. Um, I, I took a bunch of dice. Mm -hmm. And I remade the album cover. Yeah. And the girl, uh, she's painting it. Yeah. You know, the little guy. Very cool. He's going to go in the hole there. Move up here. That's another roll of bones. Like, I, I did a big a big area for a roll of bones. I like that album. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Counterparts. 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 Another, you know, a 90s Rush album. Did okay. Did That's right. a nice album. Yep, the yep. drums are sounds amazing. Yep, very good. Again, recorded. Are you sure the camera's okay, Lynn? Is it recording? Yep. Okay, good. Let's move on. And again, the sad part of this all is we need you to take down the flags. Yeah. Right? The city made you take down the flags. And the piano window too. Is that blackness from from the burning? Is that it? No, that, that was algae. It was done. It was like that before the fire. Okay. Even Neil came here and it was black and he was say he was saying negligence, negligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. So right here, what do we have? We have the dog. Yeah, the dog. We see. The Dalmatian again, dog for signals. Again, the city to ask me to take it down. Okay. So let's do what? Can we have to go up here? Yeah. 
Yeah. crazy people who want to come here and just vandalize, you can't because there's cameras. Well, if they go inside, the, the police are going to be here five minutes. Yeah. And that's what happened. That's what happened after years of neglect, right? Yeah. Was people just breaking in, taking things? Well, it was not. They didn't break in, it was open. It was open. It yeah. was open. Everything was open. Can we see anything on the inside here? See, there's renovations in there. Can't see, eh? There's a uh, there's the studio light there. Okay. That thing too is a the studio sign. Okay. It changed colors. But then again, the city they asked me to. They asked. And the that's owner. because of the roof. What about what about the city of Morin Heights saying, okay, this is now a historic site, and they declared it a historic yes, site? Yes, they could. Yeah. Come 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 closer. They could do it. And is there any intention for the city to? I'm not sure about that. No? I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think they, they, would, they, would, they would like to destroy it. Really? The boulder, they had uh, too much trouble. But since I'm here, 22 months, not a call. They, you, they used to have calls from the firemen and the police every day. Every two days, every day, police was here. And always trouble, you know? But since I put the cameras and I. I put the uh, alarm system and stuff, they didn't have calls. Not you probably much. need like 500,000, 400,000 to fix this place up. Oh, at least. At least, yeah. 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 But I just put a new GoFundMe on for 25,000 to fix the roof. Okay. Because the, the two main beams in there, they collapse. There's a new video I just put up there. You see the, the, the work we did. We, uh, we just, uh, an emergency work. We, we, Jacked it up with posts, you know, to keep it. But now it's, you can't go in. What, was the inside cleaned up? I, I, from what I, I, I see, it was cleaned up. up. Yeah, the inside's all cleaned up. It just becomes dangerous because the roof collapsed, right? Yeah. So the city doesn't want me to go in. But uh, until we get the renovation permits, we're, we're up, we applied and everything. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look around here. Is there anywhere else to look in? Oh yeah, the lake. Come. Oh, the famous lake. Oh, there's a lake. Nice. I all the trees Swimming. Yeah. And from what I remember, Richard, this was one of the first digital studios to create digital albums, like to to, to record in digital. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it was analog. No, no, but afterwards, after like, you know, when everything started going digital, it was one of the first studios to go digital. Well, we could double check that. No, I don't think so. Because they went down because they didn't go digital. Is this is this the famous place where sort of like you see the drum kit? That's sort of room there. That's where uh, this right here. Yeah, that's the, the main room. So th room. this this windows here where you could see like you know Tom Sawyer and stuff. Well, there's a all this part here was a, an extension in okay. '86. Yeah. So when Tom Sawyer was recorded, it wasn't there. So what did with Tom Sawyer? Was it there? Was no, it was there? it's the same place. It's just they had an extension. Oh, okay, okay. It, right. it was windows inside, but mm -hmm. um, they made an extension. All right. 
some, some park was uh, extended, you know, they made the, sure, sure, sure. A more uh, more room. In, in can you see any side? No, you can't. You can see. You can see some stuff. No, there. we can't film in there. Can't see nothing. We'll see some stuff there. Let's go down the stairs. You might want to right, just walk down slowly there. Linda. Okay. Uh, you know, oh, I think I'll stay up here, me. Here, give me the camera. Okay. Is it running? Yeah. Okay. Here, here. Jimmy, be careful. Yeah. Be careful then, okay? No, I, I'm going to stay up. I'm going to go from oh, here. Come on. Just, just be careful. Oh, come on. There's no railing. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Just, just take your time. And she's no, no. She's she's gonna have a hard time. Okay, okay. let's go down here. here. All right. So, what's going on here? Let's before we go down to the lake. Well, that was the uh, the, the part uh, that was built in '86. This part here, that was like uh, the reception and a uh, little place for for them to relax. Yeah. Uh, dining uh, dining area too. Okay. Is this going to be a roof suddenly over its head here or not? I don't know about that. If we if we get a few millions, yes. But for now, I don't know. Look at Nanette. Really nice. Did a nice job there, right? Eh? Okay. So where the bonfires are. Okay, now, and this is like the famous lake where you can see a lot of musicians sort of like taking a little canoes, right? That's right. Uh -huh. And if right. actually, if this raft right here is where Neil Port put his drum kit on, yeah. right? That, that, that was gone. It was gone all over. There was one, one raft went there, the other one went all the way to the other side of the lake. And the neighbor helped us last year to bring him back, you know? So if any, everybody remembers that, that's where Neil Pert like said, you know, I'm gonna put my drum kit on this raft, put it in the middle, and uh, play uh, for Tamo there. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Unfortunately, you know, it is the shape that it's in, right? We're not the roof cave, caved in, so they had to sort of remove the flags, yeah. right? The flags. The city, asked us to do that. the city asked to remove the flags. I'm not sure. Here it is. It's all in the wilderness. So that's all you're gonna get for now. And uh, we'll talk later. Thank you.